Tag TV and Tag Radio be seen and heard by both technology users and technology producers throughout the state of Georgia and around the world. Low cost, big benefits, powerhouse online branded video and audio has arrived. Tag TV, Tag Radio, there's a lot more to know. This edition of Tech Talk is brought to you by Globalspeak.com, new media consultants, corporate video and audio communications, video and audio production and distribution, live and virtual event production. Tag TV and Tag Radio is a service of Globalspeak.com, creatively delivering powerful marketing, video, and audio solutions. Visionaries predict that in the future we will be empowered by advanced technologies that will provide a seamless mobile lifestyle. Wait a minute. In the future? What if the future was right here, right here, right now, here in Atlanta? The creation of a comprehensive and reliable suite of mobile commerce tools to enable mobile commerce transactions in an interoperable, secure environment. Mobile payments, mobile wallet, couponing, and intuitive marketing alerts, even a trusted service manager. To achieve a truly mobile lifestyle, it must be a complete ecosystem. MNOs, financial institutions, well-known and trusted consumer brands, retailers, and payment processors. The, the future is here now. The future of mobile commerce for all North America and the world is headquartered right here in Atlanta. Core Fire. Greetings, everyone. It's Tuesday, September 13, 2011, and this is Tech Talk with Technology Association of Georgia President Tino Mandela. I'm your guest host, Frank Baia. Over a year ago, SKCNC USA, a wholly owned subsidiary of the leading innovator and global provider of mobile technology solutions, launched the M Commerce Center of Excellence here in Atlanta with the single mission of delivering advanced mobile commerce services to the U.S. and worldwide. In May of this year, it unveiled its new brand identity for its mobile commerce business, CoreFire. Up to the Tech Talk, Keith Smith, President and Chief Operations Officer of CoreFire. Keith leads a team of payments and mobile veterans who collaborate with financial institutions, retailers, technology innovators, and mobile network operators to develop innovative and most exciting and most important solution to the future of global mobile commerce, an inoperable service to facilitate rapid adoption, engagement, and growth of mobile commerce. His passion for launching new markets, his career as an innovator are both testaments to a dynamic career path best described by Corefire's own tagline, Live Life Mobile, a global leader headquartered right here in Atlanta, a future solution that will bring all of the independent necessary elements together in one interoperable system. When it comes to mobile commerce, it's no doubt it's where Georgia leads. Welcome, Keith Smith. President and Chief Operating Officer, Corefire. Keith, welcome to Tech Talk. Hey, Frank. Thanks for having me on today. Well, obviously, uh, you can't really go through a day without hearing a little bit about mobile commerce. It's certainly a hot topic of the moment. Uh, go into it a little bit about uh, what mobile commerce is in consumer terms. Frank, uh, today, you know, mobile commerce is a is definitely a broad term, and I, but I think specifically for the consumer, it's uh, converting what you have in your physical wallet to a digital wallet that is uh, more secure and more convenient, you know, on your cell phone and uh, everything from being able to wave and pay to, you know, receiving uh, notifications of offers and uh, promotions and then couponing and, you know, being able to gift, you know, virtually uh, gift cards to one another when mm -hmm. actually having to walk into the storefront. So I, I, my guy in college now can get my money electronically, and I don't have to worry about actually putting it into the bank anymore. He can just tap me for it immediately. Thanks, exactly. Keith. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, one of the things I think comes up a lot is, is security. Um, and uh, I was at a fintech conference just not too long ago that was actually talking about how uh, mobile commerce is actually in many ways more secure um, than uh, the traditional methods that people feel uh, uh, concerned about leaving. Um, before we go into that too much, though, who is Corefire? And, and maybe give us some background about the technology, products, and services that you um, uh, provide to enable mobile commerce. Sure. Uh, Corefire is a mobile commerce technology company. We are a wholly owned subsidiary of a company out of Seoul, Korea, by the name of SKCNC. 
um, SK has been the world's leader in mobile commerce uh, technology uh, going back 10 years ago. And what we've done is we've established Corefire as the world headquarters for mobile commerce and taking the technology that was created in Korea and localizing it in different parts of the world. And so our focus right now is the U.S. and our headquarters is here in uh, Alpharetta, Georgia. Wow, that's uh, really impressive. A, a, uh, certainly a great kudu for us here to be able to draw in that kind of uh, expertise and talent and have it headquartered out of Alpharetta. Certainly that's an obvious location in a, in a win-win type of relationship. Uh, but talk a little bit about the technology products and services themselves specifically, maybe go into a little bit more, as they say, granular. Sure. So we we operate three uh, unique platforms, but they're tightly coupled. And so the first one is what's called a TSM, it's Trusted Service Manager, and that is the technology utilized by Google uh, today to allow the, the transferring of a credit card basically from a MagStripe or, or physical card embossing. We take it in our platform, digitize the card data, encrypt it, push it over the, over the air in an OTA fashion down to the handset, and then our technology also goes into a, a thing, a, location on the phone called a secure element and we manage the keys of that secure element and put the card data in there lock it back uh, and manage all of that security around that card provisioning uh, so it it is really a uh, a facilitation of plastic to digital but then also supported very tightly with uh, state-of-the-art uh, security algorithms our second platform is a mobile wallet platform and basically what this looks like is an operating system for the handset that allows individual uh, UIs or applications to interface to a common platform so example being you could have a Google wallet and you could have a, a Target wallet you could have a Starbucks wallet and you could have you know a Bank of America wallet those wallets would tie into a common platform that has the security features uh, to control the quality of data, uh, the type of data that's being transmitted to those wallets for those each uh, stakeholders, those individual service providers, again, being, you know, say Bank of America or Target. So they can sit there and have our position is that technology, that platform is tied to a number of, you know, to the ecosystem mm -hmm. of service providers and then the um, the individual brand controls what's in that into that wallet. So it makes it a simple, secure, and easy interface uh, for uh, value-added data to be provisioned to that wallet. And then our third platform is our mobile marketing platform. And what that does is that enables uh, retailers and card issuers, uh, MNOs, mobile network operators, and others to market and promote to consumers, and it also allows consumers to come in and set their preference. So, Frank, you wouldn't get... If you weren't interested in traveling, you know, to South America, you wouldn't get offers for South America. Uh, if you weren't interested in electronics, you wouldn't get offers for electronics. But uh, and if you shopped at a particular grocery store, it would, you know, you could set your preference to only get offers for that particular grocery store. So it's both for the service provider to be able to facilitate the marketing and the pushing of what they believe is, you know. Uh, valuable data to the consumer, but it also allows the consumer to set the preferences to say, hey, only send me what I'm interested in. Mm. So, and that drills down even more to where an individual retailer could send promotions all the way down to the SKU level. So, a retailer could go down to an, an, a specific product in color code. So, if it's a coffee maker, it's a Krupp's coffee maker, and it's in, you know, Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, zip code 30004 is the you know, market, I, market I want to target, you know, as far as consumers, and you can redeem these at Bed Bath & Beyond at North Point Mall. So that's what our marketing platform does. Well, that's pretty impressive. I mean, you have the, the whole integration of the, the three combinations. Uh, one of the things that I know is um, anytime that you see a disruptive technology influence a, a current vertical uh, the way that um, commerce has been in the past, Adoption seems to be a, a major consideration. You know the impact it has on the culture that's been doing it the same way all the, also in this case probably for decades, if not even longer. Talk a little bit about the adoption rate from a consumer standpoint. Are we 
are we accepting a mobile commerce and how quickly are we accepting it? Maybe go into a little bit about where we are now and where you see it going in the next year or two. Yeah, so I think that uh, – great question. Uh, consumer adoption is just starting to occur. And, you know, prior, you know, to, you know, six months ago when uh, Google put out the first Nexus S phone with a secure mm -hmm. element in it, uh, we didn't have in the U.S. smartphones that were NFC enabled. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you go back and look at smartphone adoption, you know, as well, we've seen a huge spike in smartphone adoption in the last 18 months. And so – First and foremost, you know that's a that's a huge catalyst, you know, to enable this technology is getting the right uh, device in the consumer's hands. But at the same time, making sure that our technology can op operate also on what's called feature phones. So we do we do both, and so that's really uh, just occurred in the last 18 months when we when we started this company. We were the first to bring that technology to the U.S. to be able to handle both uh, smartphones and feature phones in a mobile commerce environment. So now we have uh, the four major MNOs in the United States have all, you know, come to market with their mobile commerce strategy. We've had Google, obviously one of the largest brands, you know, in the world, come forward and launch their mobile wallet and mobile, mobile commerce strategy. We've had Visa and MasterCard, you know, in the market promoting. And so we're starting to see uh, the ecosystem start to form. Our partnership with First Data uh, is very strategic in providing this both uh, to financial institutions and to the merchants. And so a big part of the adoption for consumers is getting payment credentials to the phone in a secure fashion and to the right kind of phone. And then second is to give the consumer a reason to pay. And so when you look at what we've done in our partnerships, everything from First Data to Google, with Citibank, with MasterCard, Incom, is we continue to build out around this to make sure that the consumer has the value add that's needed. And so it's not just I want to get credit cards to the phone, which is neat. I want to be able to get credit cards to the phone, and then I want to give the consumer a reason to transact, and I want to make you know the value where we're turning essentially $100 into $110 mm -hmm. because you're using mobile versus mm -hmm. you know what today is traditional you know plastic and paper. And assume that um, not unlike, and I guess it's a, a bit exaggerated, but um, so much of gaming is coming into play into commerce now where you have incentives and rewards, not only the ability to make 110 out of 100, but uh, to reward actions and, uh, uh, and incentivize <clears throat> certain actions uh, for that consumer to even gain uh, ideally more points or more credits of one kind or another. I mean, I can see this evolving into a number of different things as, Really, a, a an almost I wouldn't say an insular, but certainly an economy within itself. Yes. Uh, you know, one of the things that you hear a lot about is when you talk about adoption, um, is the uh, not only the adoption from the standpoint of uh, moving from the culture of uh, actually using currency or a credit card, but uh, even the consideration of the interoperability. If I'm understanding correctly, one of your platforms allows for all of the different wallets to be. If they potentially come from different systems to be able to operate in a singular system of yours, is that would that be correct? That's correct. That's correct. That's pretty strong. I, one of the things you hear a lot about in terms of the overall evolution of fintech or financial technologies is the concern that, much like a lot of innovation, they happen in verticals that are are uh, uh, silos and they really don't communicate with each other or interoperate with each other. So that sounds like a very strong selling proposition. You mentioned uh, I, I was talking about. Uh, um, you know, uh, adoption. Talk a little bit about your target customers and, and who are your current partners. So our our uh, current partners are uh, First Data Corporation here in Atlanta, uh, Google, Mastercard, mm. uh, Incom, which is another Atlanta-based uh, company, and then we have you know several others that are in the works that we'll end up uh, announcing in the fourth quarter. And you know our target audience really is everybody from on the B2B side is really the payment processors, payment networks, uh, core banking providers, uh, as well as, you know, emerging technology, you know, providers, and the uh, mobile network, you know, community, so the, the major M&Os, mm -hmm. you know, that are out there, mm -hmm. um, and, and then the financial institutions and retailers uh, is, our, is our target market, and, you know, ultimately, it's you know getting to the consumer's hand, but Corefire is not a consumer brand. Uh, we are a B2B 
uh, service provider, and our business model is really around software as a service, and you know, connecting uh, this ecosystem and with these three very important platforms that we have. And obviously, uh, when we talk about B two B, enabling those customers that you have from a business to business standpoint to have unique services and a unique uh, capabilities to attract their customers in the long run. Um, you know, you certainly uh, are concerned or, or looking at the overall trends as it relates to the ultimate consumer because at some point I'm guessing everything transfers over to mobile commerce and, and uh, the time when uh, we're dealing only with, uh, I don't even think we call them cell phones anymore or even digital devices. I heard mobile computers the other day as a term to describe what we hold in our hands and have the capability of utilizing in a lot of different ways, including actually making purchases or or, or handling banking or what we used to call banking uh, steps. Uh, I, I think our, our listeners would uh, uh, be frustrated if I didn't ask this question because so many of us are, are of Atlanta, but we're also in Atlanta, or in Atlanta rather, but we're of Atlanta. We care about it. We care about our technology community. We care about the technology economic growth in the state of Georgia. Why did uh, you choose Georgia for Core Fire's mobile headquarters? You know, Frank, it's a it's a question I get asked quite often. And um, you know, the great thing about Atlanta is it has become, you know, very quickly the payment hub uh, for the United States. When you look at payment, electronic payments, and the companies that facilitate those, kind of behind the scenes that a lot of people don't know about, companies like First Data, uh, companies like Check Free, and uh, uh, global payments and mm. TSIS, total systems, which is down in Columbus, but have, has offices up here. And then, you know, the financial community, the banks that are here, uh, makes a great place, you know, for us uh, to locate this company from a talent standpoint to be able to recruit people that understand that part. And then also we have a, a great history of entrepreneurship here in this here in the city and driving new technology. And so whether it was mobile banking or it was the gift cards in the grocery stores and many, many other companies, uh, we've got a great uh, environment that supports to us, at least when we were looking at locating the business, that supports the entrepreneurial uh, you know, mentality and structure uh, that we need as a business um, to be supported. Another part is Atlanta is a, is a great family community. Um, very family oriented, very family focused, and, and we find, you know, that we're able to go out and recruit, and obviously compete with Silicon Valley and Boston and uh, Washington D.C. and you know other areas mm-hmm. in, the, in the country, and, and people want to move to the South uh, because they like the the kind of family you know orientation and, and culture uh, down here. So it's it's been great. You know, the airport obviously makes it easy to to fly anywhere in the world. Um, so you know, transportation is a is a benefit for us as well. And then the last part is is I grew up here in this city, and uh, and really you know, home, Atlanta is home to me. And so you know, being able to contribute and uh, give back mm-hmm. you know to this to this community is uh, is very important. Well, what a blessing when you hear the whole description and have it turn full circle all the way back to uh, you being a, a, a local. Um, uh, a local kid and, and growing up here and, and going, getting educated here. Um, I was just about to, um, r- unfortunately, we're running out of time. I was thinking to myself, I had looked at some of your information and saw your slogan, and I was thinking about a couple of years ago, Star Trek said, live long and prosper, but now it's live life and mobile, right? So uh, we'll close today's Tech Talk with live life mobile. And, uh, Keith, thank you for taking time out of your very busy schedule. Best of luck and continued success. It sounds very, very exciting. Good for Atlanta, good for Georgia, good for uh, uh, for Core Fire. It's a win-win. So thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule for joining us on Tech Talk today. Sure thing, Frank. Thank you very much.